Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't get any better than this. The game is tied. We're in the bottom of the ninth. The count is three and two, and the bases are loaded. The crowd is going wild. The batter steps up to the plate, and the pitch. <laughs> Hi friends, I'm the Saxophone Oracle. This week I want to talk about phrase endings. What is a phrase ending? Simply put, it's how we end any musical idea or phrase we play. It's how we bring a logical conclusion, how we bring the whole musical idea together and to an ending, okay? And this is really important. This is something that, this can do two things that are really important if we focus on this. One thing is that it can really up our level exp exponentially as improvisers. It can make us sound that much better if we get good at paying attention to our phrase endings. The other thing about getting good at phrase endings is that it can really help us bring our own sound, our own twist to pre-existing lines, right? We learn lines, it's fantastic. It helps us to understand voice leading. It helps us develop our own vocabulary, our own library of ideas. It helps us to sound coherent, like we're playing in the style correctly. Um, so it's great, we learn these patterns and you know, it, it might be a stock pattern, but the way we decide to finish it, to end the phrase, that can be unique to us. And depending on how we do this, it can put the phrase that came before it in a completely different context or have a different meaning, right? So it's a great way to develop our own personal way of, of playing certain things, right? Is it, it, everything changes by the way we decide to taper off the phrase. The main reason I wanted to talk about it this week, though, is because I've noticed over the years, listening to, to good players, right, intermediate to advanced players, good high school players, college players, great amateur players, there's this tendency is that we learn these phrases and we play the phrases, but we, we neglect the ending of the phrase. Right? And, and I think the reason for this is like, I, I just did a quick Google search. I found a couple PDFs. You know, there's these books of patterns that, that we can buy and learn out of, or we transcribe them from solos, or we download them from the internet. But for the most part, not, not all of them, but for the most part, the geniuses who put these books together for us, um, they put together these great lines, but they'll, they'll, they'll look at the chord progression 2, 5, 1, for example, and they'll put a great eighth note line over the two chord, the five chord, and then they resolve it to the one and that's where it stops. And the thing is, is music doesn't work like that, right? It's like, just because we get to the one chord, the musical idea doesn't stop. It continues and it needs to have some sort of conclusion or it needs to tie into the next phrase that we're gonna do, right? But we learn these things from these sheets, from these books, and then we kinda, you kinda hear it, right? Like, I might hear a, a pretty decent player and he's playing, they're, they're playing a song and it comes up to a two, five, one and you hear like, it's like, okay, great. And then the next two five comes up. I'm thinking, okay, great. This person knows what they're doing. Sounds great. Beautiful vocabulary. Great change playing. Then the next two five comes, you know. And then I'm starting to like, yeah, this is getting a little tiresome, you know. And the next thing, and then it's just like, okay, it doesn't make sense, right? It's like one idea, great. Next idea, great. But it's just a bunch of choppy, incoherent ideas that don't go anywhere. They don't have any resolution. So it's like you're walking along and the ground falls out from under you. Or, or it's as if, you know, you're like, hey, mom, I'm going to the store to get that you know, get what? Or, you know, you spend the whole night chatting with that special someone at the bar and it comes to the end of the night, you ask for their number and they say, sure, it's 204-3347. Uh, it's like, what? I need the last three digits, right? <laughs> I'll never find you. There's 10,000 combinations it could be. I'm gonna call everyone in the city looking for you, right? And that's what it is when we play a pattern and we don't have a phrase ending for it. Or we don't spend time focusing on the phrase endings, right? And then, you know, that's kind of where we end up sounding like, oh, uh, th this person just plays licks, or this person, you know, they're not really improvising. And, and I think a big thing to that is that, they, you know, they're, they're literally just playing the lick, and they don't have a resolution to it. So it's really important, it's a really simple thing, um, 
that we can focus on that's going to you know, drastically improve the way we sound as improvisers. And again, it's going to make us sound more individual by the way we decide to end our phrases. And it can make one stock phrase come across in like having so many different meanings or, or a different feeling to it depending on how we decide to end it. So what I'm going to do for the rest of the video is I'm going to play the same lick over and over again, just a stock lick you'd find on any PDF you download. And I'm going to play, you know, 10, 15 different phrase endings, different ways I could end the phrase. And I'll transcribe them, I'll put the PDF up on the website so you can check them out, analyze, see what you like, what you don't like, why things work, why they don't, etc. And give it a shot for yourself. All right, so this is the 251 lick I'm going to work with in the key of C for tenor concert B flat for everyone else. It goes like this. All right, simple enough. One more time. All right, this is the kind of thing we'd see if we downloaded a, a list of 251 licks. But there's no resolution, there's no phrase ending. So here we go. Here's just a bunch of different ways we can finish this phrase. So there you have it. There's, there's a handful of ways how, how we could end phrases, right? And depending how I do it, it, give, it puts the line in a different context, right? It gives it a different meaning, a different feel. You know, you can end it with a bluesy feel or a chromatic feel, more boppy, a shorter phrase, a longer phrase. We could end on like a more colorful note. However we choose to do it puts everything in sort of a different context. It frames it in a different way. I'm the saxophone oracle. Phrase endings is what we were talking about this week. I hope you found the information useful. I'd love to know what you think. If you've tried it, you could send me a, a clip. I'd love to hear what you've come up with. Um, as always, if you have questions or comments, leave them below. Send me an email. I'd love to address them in any future videos. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you like what you're seeing, please tell someone it would mean the world to me. It'll help this channel grow. Um, that's it for now. I wish you happy, happy practicing. Thank you for continuing to watch. Have a great week. Bye for now. See you next Tuesday.